I probably do have a little more hair than you do because I'm older than you. But soon you'll have more hair too. It's all down to hormones. Can you show me, please? Can you take off your shirt and show me, please? Please. This is a film uh, that deals with blindness, which is certainly the worst nightmare for a direct. What I wanted to shoot in this film is the light you can find at the end of this film. The fact of being here today is something I still can't quite believe. I have little experience, I have very little knowledge, I'm almost like an empty shell, and the fact of having been selected to instill life in this character, Misako, it's a little bit as if uh, by instilling life I give light and during the shoot it was very difficult but I think uh, everything I experienced during the shoot will give me strength in the film the film is about losing something that is dear to us and I think that in my 10-year acting career I learned a great deal but I broke this down to build something new and I am really grateful to Naomi Kawase for having brought me here. I love close up. <laughs> I like close ups, that's why I use them a lot. And since I was dealing with visual impairment in this film, even if they cannot see, I wanted to use these close ups to express the image they have in their soul. この<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 
Having a film shown in Cannes gives it so much more exposure. So this makes it a very valuable place. Congratulations for the 70th anniversary of the Cannes Film Festival. Were you even as a kid a fan of westerns? Is western something that you liked when you were growing up? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I was. I grew up in the '30s and '40s, and westerns were. Every kid wanted to be in the western. Every huh. kid wanted to pack a gun and ride a horse. <laughs> so, uh, uh, as a as a kid, I liked them very much. Why do you think the genre is so resilient? People just always they like westerns. Then they like westerns now. Yeah. What is it that is the appeal? I don't know. It's pure escapism. I think you escape yeah. to a different time in history and fantasy kind of deals. And in the day when the uh, law and order was all built about the individual and yeah. how well he took care of himself. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's a fantasy that we don't have anymore, and, and you can't have in, in an organized society. Yeah. You don't look no meaner than hell, cold-blooded damn killer. I ain't like that anymore, kid. Thousand dollars reward, Will. You feel the film is emotional, right? I mean, it's an art form. Exactly. Emotions exactly. are what's It's key. an emotional art form. It's not an intellectual art form at all. You know, I mean, maybe it is in, in, in some cases as far as, you're, as, far as the, the details, but, but the, your emotions that you, you get when you first read it, the emotions you got when you developed the script, the emotions you got when, uh, you know, along the way, and you just transpose that to the actors and the emotion you got when you first saw them play it. Yeah. And then you, uh, that's the way it should be done. Any man don't want to get killed. Better clear on out the back. Unforgiven. I wanted to talk about France a little bit. You have your next project is, is right uh, about the... Uh, train attack in France, is that? Uh, yeah, I've been flirting with the project yeah. of that. I kind of thought that was interesting, uh, the uh, interesting uh, situation in, in, in these strange times that we live in now. And uh, so I'm fooling with that. Yeah. Why you, you have such a connection with France? I mean, you're, people really love your work here. Do you yeah. have, and they've had half from the beginning, do you have any idea why that's true? They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs>